Hi YouTube, I'm sorry to start with a cheesy picture of me holding my painting but this is just to give you an idea of the scale of the painting. Usually a lot of my step-by-step -step paintings that I do on here have only taken two hours or four hours and um, this one has taken me a few weeks. So I'm just going to start with a very quick run through of the steps just to show you them uh, and then I'll go through them slower and tell you what I did at each stage. Okay, while you watch this very basic quick slideshow through the um, various stages, um, I'll just let you know that this is a thorny devil lizard, um, and the scientific name is great, it's Moloch Haridus um, from Australia, and these are probably my favourite reptiles on the whole planet. I was quite lucky because I was able to spend a year in Australia, and uh, I had the privilege of being able to hold a few of these. And I'd love to keep them in captivity, but they only eat a couple of species of ants. So basically, if you want to keep them in captivity, you have to be able to breed the ants as well. Okay, going back to stage one, this is just the first drawing stage. Um, so I literally just was getting the proportions of the lizard in and breaking up um, some of the main sections and getting in some of the bigger um, thorns on the back. Um, but yeah, very light, very basic. Okay, this is the second drawing stage. Um, all I've done here is just go over a lot of what I did in the first stage a lot darker. And um, once I was happy with the positioning of everything, um, I've added more scales. Um, and this is all done with a 2H pencil. I like to use a 2H pencil so it's nice and crisp uh, and so that the pencil doesn't smudge everywhere. Um, it doesn't matter too much because this is an acrylic painting. So... Um, the paints are going to cover everything anyway. Okay, for the first painting stage, um, I mixed lots of colours um, on my palette. Um, I normally just use a plate as a palette. And um, I just started applying them, basically. So I was using a very small brush. Um, I think it was a, a zero brush or a size one. Something very small with a small point on it. Um, and I just started kind of blocking everything in, um, working from left to right. I normally don't work like this. I normally do really big sections um, and then go in over the top with uh, more and more detail. Um, but this, because it is such a detailed thing, I had to work uh, in this way, where I was blocking in small sections. Uh, and I continue in the same way uh, all the way to the tail, basically. Um, but if you look, what I'm doing is I'm going in between each scale and I kind of leave a very thin, pale outline around the scales. Um, and that just means I can go in later and, and darken and add shadows and things in between the scales um, and highlights as well. OK, next section, exactly the same again. Um, I'm using System 3 acrylics to do this. OK, next section done exactly the same way. Um, I should probably let you know that I'm working from a very small, you know, normal size photograph to do this um, that I took in Australia. I have quite a few photos of the thorny devils, um, but I'm also looking at other photos of thorny devils online just to give me a better idea of how the scales go, because it's quite hard to see on a small photograph. More blocking in. Um, it's very basic, this is just to get the main colours in the right sort of places. Um, and I know there's going to be a lot more refining to do later on. More blocking in. Um, I'll put a list of the colours that I used for this um, in the video description. Um, just in case you want to have a go yourself. Blocking in the back leg. And blocking in the last bit of the tail. Um, I was really pleased because this bit, to get the whole kind of lizard in like this, didn't take me that long actually. I think I did it over about three nights. Um, pretty fast for me. Okay, at this point I decided to airbrush the background. Um, obviously if you wanted to have a go at this and you didn't have an airbrush, you can just paint the background in the usual way. Um, but using an airbrush gives a really nice kind of out of focus effect, which is why I do it. Um, so what you can see here is the lizard um, with this stuff called art mask um, or masking film. Uh, what it is, it's basically, it's a bit like sticky back plastic, but not as sticky. Um, and what you do is you lay it over the uh, thing that you want to uh, protect from paint. 
uh, and then you draw around the outside of it so I just use a biro for that uh, and then you cut it all out with a scalpel uh, and you stick it over the top so you can see the shine uh, on the tail of the lizard here um, this now has a coating over the top of it which I'll be able to peel off later uh, here's another view of it um, again you can see the shine um, showing that it's got a thin layer of plastic over the top of everything you don't have to do the whole uh, lizard in one go you can cut quite a few sections and join them all together which is what I've done here obviously with quite a complicated um, you know lot of spikes on his back it just makes it easier okay I thought I'd quickly show you my airbrush um, equipment just to give you an idea so if you're thinking about um, getting into airbrushing I'd say, you know, usually the main expense is the compressor. So the one you can see here, I think, was about £300. Um, but it's a silent compressor. You can buy smaller compressors, but usually they go chug, 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 make like a little sort of engine noise. Um, so, yeah, that can be quite headache inducing. Um, but once you've got that, the airbrushes, you can get basic airbrushes. So the blue ones you can see here are badger airbrushes. They're quite cheap. I think you can pick them up for like £30, £40, something like that each. Um, if you look at the airbrush that's in the box, um, that's, well, I used to pronounce this Rotring, but I have a feeling it might be pronounced Rotring um, because it's German and Rotring just means red ring and they have red rings on them. So I think that might be it. Um, but anyway, that little set that you see there cost me about, I think it was about £450. So you can see airbrushes vary a lot uh, in their quality. Um, but for this particular um, painting, I used the one you can see there with the red hose on it, um, which is a Pash airbrush, which is sort of middle range one. Uh, and that works really well as well so you don't have to buy a really expensive airbrush um, to be able to get good airbrush results so remember that airbrushing really is just a way of applying paint as a very fine spray um, so it's also pretty messy so having a big sheet like this laid out is a really good idea um, and just be ready with lots of um, you know kitchen paper or cotton wool buds and that kind of thing to help you clean up so this shows the um, first bit of airbrushing done over the art mask uh, you can see the shine still from the art mask uh, and you can see I've just airbrushed over all of it um, because I know that I'm going to be peeling this off um, this just gives some out of focus plants in the background uh, and some out of focus um, plants and shadows in the foreground and this is the same image um, just stood up to show you it better ah this is the really fun bit and this is probably why i love airbrushing so much um, because when you get to the stage where you get to peel off the uh, art mask it makes such a difference and you get these nice crisp edges um, and your painting really kind of starts to um, look more realistic Okay, so this shows with all the art mask peeled off. Um, and you can see actually the lizard now looks quite a bit paler than it did. And that's obviously because it was surrounded by white before. Now it's got colour all around it. Um, it makes it look a little bit flushed out. But that's okay because I've got lots more um, detail work that I still need to do to this. Okay, so this stage is mainly about adding the plants in the foreground. Um, you can see that uh, the shadows that I put on already with the airbrush um, were sort of out of focus and they are underneath and then you paint the plants on top of that that gives some depth to the whole image uh, and makes it look slightly more photographic um, I've added a few plants in the background as well and a few um, bits of gravel just to start off that texture on the floor Okay, this stage was about adding more scales overall to the uh, body of the lizard um, and also just to sort of darken him slightly. There's more of this to do, but this was just to get that started off. And there's a little bit more um, gravel added as well. Okay, here I've really started to darken him up, um, really adding quite a lot of shadows into a lot of the kind of main um, spikes on the body. 
uh, and a lot more kind of small scales and things. Um, I've also really gone to town with the um, gravel uh, coming right into the foreground. This gives the whole um, picture a lot more texture and it kind of um, joins the foreground to the midground uh, and just makes it look like a more complete image. Okay, at this point I revisited my um, original photographs that I was working from uh, and I could see that it was quite a bit darker at the top and around, around the corners. Um, so what I've done is gone back with the airbrush um, and this is a, a good step to do anyway um, because you paint your um, foliage in focus but then if you want to make it look slightly more photographic if you go in with some more out of focus um, bits in the foreground they can look like sort of branches and, and uh, twigs and things that sort of uh, stick up and are in a, a different plane basically and so they give that sort of out of focus effect so you can see what I've done there in the foreground. I've also airbrushed on some more um, reddish brown colour, which just makes the, the ground look not quite so sort of yellow ochre colour, but more of a sort of a yeah, reddish Australian uh, ground kind of colour. And that works much better, I think. And it again, it ties the whole thing together. OK, um, when you first look at this image, you might think it doesn't, look that different to the last image um, but if you toggle backwards and forwards between the two um, you'll see some subtle differences um, so one is that I went in with some grey coloured paint um, and smoothed in and added quite a lot more kind of shadows to the spikes and things like that um, and that's made I think a huge difference I very almost stopped at the last step um, but this just shows really that actually spending that little bit of time at the last minute um, kind of tweaking it and adding a bit of extra detail can make quite a lot of difference um, like on the gravel as well I've gone in and I've added little highlights um, to a lot of the gravel to bring it out especially sort of um, under him where he's kind of he's got shadow under him but there's a little bit of light catching some of them uh, and again that helps bring out some of the texture um, there's also, if you look at, again at the previous image, there's a patch where I was airbrushing last time and right by where his sort of knee is on his back leg, if you like, um, as I was airbrushing it went bloop and there was a big um, black splodge on the middle of his back leg. Um, and you can see on the last image it's just a sort of a a pale grey smudge where I had to kind of wipe it off with a bit of kitchen paper um, so I've gone in and I've repaired that as well on his knee uh, and I think this is the final image works really well so I'm really pleased with it okay I'll leave you with this uh, picture a close-up of his head um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little glimpse of how I've done my painting um, if you want to do any sort of quick or fairly quick tutorials um, I have got some other um, painting videos up on YouTube um, they're watercolor paintings um, there's like one of a sort of thatch cottage one of a, a beetle there's a toucan a snail um, various things so have a little look at those um, and don't forget to uh, hit subscribe if you want to see any of my kind of painting tutorials in the future um, or videos of anything else that I happen to post up. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.